Happy Sunday, everyone. How's everybody doing? As you can see, I am in a different location. Let me get my monitor. Had to flip it on you. You know, something I have to get used to is that I got my new glasses and they have the blue filter on it. And so I have to get used to seeing the blue filter on the screen. But enough about me. Welcome to this Sunday's episode. Thank you for bearing with me while I push the broadcast back 30 minutes. Um, today, I got out of the house and I went to see the movie Oppenheimer. And it's the story of J. Robert Oppenheimer, who created the atomic bomb. Great movie. Didn't know it was going to be three hours long. So I'm sitting there in the movie like, I, I don't know if I'm going to make it out. But it is well worth the three hours. Um, didn't expect the script to go that way. Didn't expect the cinematography but it is an excellent movie i hope that you hey mama i hope you go check it out and understand i'm going to see barbie probably this weekend because after watching oppenheimer i definitely need something to counter it because it was a heavy movie with a heavy topic so i'll probably start on netflix the movie they clone Tyrone. And that's the movie with Jamie Foxx and John Boyega, Boyega and Tiana Parrish. So yes, you can see I have re I have balance in my life going from Oppenheimer to They Clone Tyrone. It's about balance. But again, both movies have great messaging, just different genres. So I encourage you to check out Oppenheimer, Barbie, They Clone Tyrone. And if there are any other movies that you think I should check out, put them in the comments below. So today we're going to talk about something where it's a, I won't say it's a weird topic, but it's something that has been on my mind for a few weeks because I've noticed everybody's been in this really weird state. And when I say weird state, everybody's been feeling kind of like meh, where they've kind of felt drained. They felt like you don't really want to do anything, even though we're that outside. You haven't really felt like being outside. Or if you go outside, you just really, you feel sluggish. You may not be sleeping well. You may be experiencing some type of fatigue. And so I went to the trusty Googles and found out that this is an actual condition called summer fatigue, where you may be feeling lethargic, where you just really, have you noticed during the summer times where you really don't feel like you have much energy to do anything, where you feel like you get up, you're already hot, you're already bothered, you're already miserable, but then as the day goes on, you seem like you don't have as much energy as you want to have, you don't sleep well, you may not have an appetite. So during the summer, there are some people that always just kind of feel off. And so if you are experiencing that, you are not alone. If you, you are experiencing that, I'm here to tell you that you aren't lazy. I'm oh, hold on. I'm here to tell you that you aren't lazy, that nothing's wrong with you, that this is actual a condition and some of the symptoms of some. Wait, I have a chart for that. I forgot. I made charts. And so we're going to talk about this for a little while. So if you've been in that space where you're feeling this, you're not alone and, and don't feel bad. Oh, no. You see, I made a little graphic with a puppy. Why? Because I like dogs and she kind of resembles my puppy. So today, what causes summer lethargic? How do you feel lethargic? Because me and this word have not gotten along all afternoon. And primarily you experience summer fatigue because the temperature is changing. And what is it? Summer fatigue is mainly caused by long exposure in the sun during the summers because the days are longer in the summer. And you may be outside more. Some of the feelings you're getting from summer fatigue are is the feeling of tiredness. And some symptoms also include loss of appetite, um, languor, headache, dizziness. So you may have this whole feeling of just truly being unwell 
the whole season. So if you have been feeling this, you now have a name for it. It is summer fatigue. And some of this is also accompanied by not sleeping well. So the heat sometimes does strange things to people. And so, like I said, I have been noticing in conversations for the last few weeks, some people have really been in a space where they hadn't felt like themselves, that you hadn't felt motivated to do much, where it's too hot to go walking, it's throwing you off your pattern. And so if you've been in this space, again, this is an, an all-inclusive list of things you could be experiencing. But if you're in this ballpark, of things that's been going on, you are not by yourself. Because in this, I learned when I was doing my research, the Japanese has a word for it and it is nasubate. And it and it means having trouble moving due to feeling exhausted. So it is seems to be a worldwide phenomenon, especially now that the temperatures are reaching at dangerous levels across the world. I was watching the news yesterday, no, this morning, where in Greece, they've had to start evacuating people because of fires, that they've had to start limiting hours for tours because of the exact um, extreme temperatures, where I think in Phoenix, it went up to 115. In Houston, it is 109. So as the temperature starts spiraling and as it continues to get warmer because of climate change, you're going to start being in spaces where you may experience this more or you may have family members or your people in your circle that are experiencing this more because it is a real thing. And the heat is doing um, can be hard on the body. So that's why if you see like certain countries, I think it's Spain that has the siestas where they take a nap in the afternoon. Because again, it's trying to navigate during this thing. So it may, because of the summer fatigue, it does leave you feeling unproductive. It may have you feeling like you just can't seem to get in stride, that everybody seems to be two or three steps ahead of you because you really can't seem to get in step with everybody else. And this is part of the summer fatigue phenomenon. Did you know that if you are experiencing summer fatigue, it can worsen when your nervous system becomes unbalanced? And when I say unbalanced, I'm not talking about in the mental health uh, wellness uh, genre. I'm not talking in the emotional health, but I'm speaking of insomnia because you can't sleep well. Or if you're one of those people that either you struggle to fall asleep or if you struggle to stay asleep. You may have be in that ballpark because I know so many people, um, including myself, that sometimes I'll nod off and it seems like at 3, 315, I have I wake back up. I don't know what's going on at 315 that needs my attention, but I, I wake back up, then nod back off. So if you're experiencing um, insomnia because you're having uh, trouble establishing a great sleep hygiene routine, that may be some of it. A lot of it, again, with summer fatigue is because it's hot outside. The indoor outdoor temperature differences. If remember being when you were little and you were with your grandma or, or with other family members that you tell you stay in or out because you're letting all the cool air out. It's, it's that same phenomenon where you go from an ex a temperature being in your home, um, 72, 76 degrees. Or if you're one of those other people that keep the house on Eskimo 67, 68, but then you come outside and now you're in 90 plus temperatures, 100 degrees temperatures, um, temperatures where your body now has to get acclimated from going basically from one extreme to the next. So you see that often happening as part of the summer fatigue phenomena, because again, if you're sitting in your house, you've got your blanket, you're comfortable, but then now you have to go outside in the heat for long periods of time, either for work, running errands or whatever the case may be, you're now outside having to adjust to the temperature. And the last one, dehydration. Because again, if you're inside all day, if you're in a space where you um, have a sedentary job and you sit down all day, 
you may not notice that you're becoming dehydrated. So if you find yourself, as I always go through the list, if you find yourself being dehydrated, one of the symptoms, make sure, one of the symptoms if you're dehydrated is that sometimes you find yourself craving sweets or you're craving something salty. You find yourself craving certain snacks and that's your body's way of trying to prompt you to start eating. If you're not familiar with the symptoms of dehydration, it could be, oh, I don't like that one. Hold on. Oh, snap, dragons. I'll make sure I give you the correct facts because I don't like speaking off the top of my head. So some signs of dehydration in children. Let's start with little folks first. If you have small children or a care form, signs of dehydration in little kids, dry tongue and dry lips, no tears with, when crying, um, a sunken soft spot on the baby's head, sunken eyes, dry wrinkled skin, rapid breathing, or cold, cool, blotchy hands or feet. Those are for children. Now, if you're a grown up or big people, it can be a headache, delirium or confusion, it could be tiredness or fatigue. Again, goes back to summer fatigue. A dry mouth and or a dry cough. Um, a heart rate, but you have a low blood pressure. You're having a loss of appetite, but you're craving sugar. Uh, swollen feet, muscle cramps, heat intolerance or chill, and in times constipation. So again, summer fatigue and dehydration go hand in hand. So if you're finding yourself experiencing any of those symptoms, please drink some water because normally by the time you're experiencing that, you're already dehydrated. True story. The, my summer trip gone wrong. I remember I was out. I was in Florida. I was bike riding, riding down the street, looking cute, hair blowing through my wind, blowing through my hair, had my cute little sunglasses on. I was giving summer. I was giving love and light like a care bear. And I remember I stopped and I was going to hang out at the beach and I went to the uh, space to get a snow cone. And I remember swiping my card and I remember the room, the space going gray. Not full, and I didn't fully pass out. The room, the space went gray. And what ended up happening is that I was dehydrated. I thought I had drank enough water the night before and that day to prepare me for my shenanigans. In that moment, I was very blessed to be surrounded with great friends that made sure that I was okay. I was doubly blessed to be around friends that made sure that you know because i had my shorts on that i didn't get robbed because again when you're in your most vulnerable state anything could happen to you and i remember when they pulled they pulled me back over you know the lifeguards had me under the tent they had ice packs all over me and i'm getting a moment of clarity and i asked two pressing questions was my outfit still cute was i still giving and what happened to my snow cone? Because it's about priorities. And I remember in that moment, um, a friend of mine, she looked at me and said, really? You caring about your snow cone? And I was like, yeah, where's my snow cone? They're like, here, here's your snow cone. And a friend of the other friend, she was like, but you didn't ask about your debit card. I said, because I knew you had my debit card. I didn't want to buy another snow cone because the thing was $6. And I want to get my $6 worth of my snow cone. Because again, dehydration can happen to anybody so if you're one of those that you say you drink this much water a day take it up to this or at least a bottle i don't have my cup um but at least start increasing your hydration because part of your summer fatigue includes dehydration and let's check out our last slide this is going to be a relatively short one because again this is one of those that Everyone may not experience, but you definitely need to be prepared for. Now, how to be summer fatigue. And I don't know why I did not change it. Um, so I'm using being lethargic and fatigue interchangeably. So how do you beat this feeling? A well-balanced diet. And I know you're like, but what does that have to do with um, 
being fatigued. When you have a well-balanced diet, you're eating the things that you need to combat the heat. So sometimes in the heat, it may not do well to always have junk food. You need foods that are going to give you, let me figure out how to politely say it. You want to have um, protein. You want to have things that are going to help you stay full longer. You want to make sure you have a balanced meal of having the fruits and the vegetables. You want those things that are going to give you the energy to sustain you throughout the day. Because again, when it gets warmer for me, my inclination is to switch over to a lighter diet. I automatically do. So during the summertime, I do not, I normally don't eat heavier meals. So for me, it's more of the lighter fares where I tr I really gravitate towards the salads, uh, more fruits, more vegetables. And that's really during the summer, my, pat my plate becomes more colorful. And it's important for you to for focus on your carbs and proteins because they are energy sources. And definitely your B vitamins because they convert carbs to energy. So you want to make sure that you're eating something that's going to keep you full fat longer and that you're not out living your best life in Florida and you're trying to swipe your card for a snow cone and things go great. Another thing that you have to do, drink enough water and choose refreshing snacks and beverages. This is a great time for, for watermelon, pineapples, grapes. This is that great time to really experiment with different fruits and different vegetables. And you want, again, Choose refreshing snacks and beverages. If you haven't tried coconut water, this is a great time to experiment with coconut water. If you haven't tried any other different types of fruits or vegetables, this is a great time to try because there are a lot of amazing vegetables and fruits out there that we haven't tried. And last, limit your sun exposure and always protect your head and skin. One of the greatest misnomers in our community is that we don't need sunscreen. And that is, as Maury has determined, that is a lie. You definitely need to have on sunscreen. You definitely need to, if you're going to be outside for long periods of time, have a hat on to protect, as the song goes, protect your neck. You need to make sure that you're hydrated. You need to make sure that, you know, you dress accordingly to where you are. Because a lot of places, I don't know if you've seen them, the swimsuits that now have the um, long sleeves. Because protect, because again, in the height of climate change, in the high, height of UV rays, um, it has, it is definitely, it has definitely gotten hotter. This is 80, 90 degree weather I used to play in. This is, this is a whole different beast. So when you're outside, if you, we're all going to be that outside, make sure that you're doing your due diligence in staying cool. Make sure that you're limiting your sun exposure. And what the weather meteorologist will always tell you that be careful of the peak heat times of the day. And I think the peak heat times of the day is like 12 to 4. Or I want to say like 12 to 2. That's when the sun is at its hottest. And I know somebody just said, but the sun is always hot. And I'm like, you're right. But at those core times, like between 12 and 4, I think, or it could be shorter range, during those peak hours, that is when the sun is at max capacity. And if you played back in the day Super Mario Brothers and you remember the sun was always chasing Super Mario, this is why, because he was hot and he was outside at the peak times of the day. So limit your sun exposure by avoiding being outside at the peak time of day. I can only speak for myself, but the peak time for me to go to the pool is normally like right now. Right now. This is normally perfect peak time for me. Anything between five and eight, you can catch me at the pool now because that's that's the time. Always protect your head. Um, wear a hat. A wear, you have a bunch of cute headwear to protect your head. And lastly, remember to wear some sunscreen. There are a lot of amazing brands that are targeted specifically for our community. Um, be sure to go out. And... Before I just tell you, let me see where I can find one. You just said, well, what brands? Sorry. 
Some of the brands that are good are Black Girl Sunscreen, um, Neutrogena, CeraVe. Here's our lip. Oh, goodness. Um, best facial sunscreen for dark skin, Black Girl Sunscreen um, from CeraVe. Fenty. But Rihanna got the market on everything. Um, Fenty has one, uh, sunscreen for darker skin. Um, if you're interested, I cannot pronounce that word, so I'm going to skip it. Um, and I want to say, I see her face, the tennis star, Naomi Osaka. I think she is also, uh, responsible for a sunscreen line, <clears throat> excuse me, for, for darker complexions. So just because we're melanated, we are still prone to the heat. That's all I have for today. Let me go back to my first slide because I thought he was cute. So in this time of being in the heat, please remember if you're experiencing feelings of tiredness, um, loss of appetite, headache, or dizziness, please take some time to take care of yourself. Limit your peak time outside. Recognize when you're feeling this. And if these symptoms are still ongoing, please go see your physician because you do not want to run the risk of having any heat types of heat stroke, heat exhaustion, or like me in the midst of Florida living fabulous, you fall out with your snow cone and mess up your cute outfit. That is all that I have for today. I will see y'all next week. Be amazing. Be blessed. Be amazing, be blessed, and I will see y'all later.